Good evening, everyone. Welcome you all to the last day of three-day international virtual workshop on soft skills, research skills, and effective classroom management in the age of artificial intelligence. Join you organized by mm -hmm. Lavender Literary Club India, Cap Comedian Trust, and Malaysian Industry Relations and Human Resources Association Malaysia. So today we have three speakers: Dr. Shailadi Almugam, academic lecturer, Institute of Teacher Education for Campus Malaysia. Second speaker of today's section, Dr. K. Shashireha, Chairperson Admis Admissions, Madhuri Ramaswamy College of Arts and Science College, Madurai. Third speaker, a prolific writer and a motivational speaker, Professor Hardeep Singh. So now I invite Dr. Ganesh Sir to introduce the first resource person. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Afia. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Hear you. Yes, okay, sir. thank you very much, uh, Afia, and uh, all the participants uh, for this uh, three-day international virtual workshop on soft skills, research skills, and effective classroom management in the age of artificial intelligence. Uh. So this is the third day, the final day, 31st of August. Good evening, India. Good night, Malaysia. And also today is the Independent Day of Malaysia, okay, 31st August, 60. Uh, six years of independence huh? uh, in 1957. So actually, I'm not joining <laughs> for this um, virtual workshops for a few months. I already told Dr. Frank because of uh, a lot of work commitment and so on. So anyway, uh, since today's slot is uh, by Dr. Shailati, my colleague huh? in uh, Institute of Teacher Education, Ipo Campus, Perak, Malaysia. So I would like to introduce her as the first speaker for today. So as we know, today we have three speakers. Uh, I think uh, most of the participants already joined from the first day, yeah? 29th of August, 30th, and today is the final day. Yeah? So let me introduce, uh, wait, hold on. Huh? Dr. Shailati. Yeah? All right, Dr. Shailati. Harumugama serves as an academic lecturer at the Department of Educational Studies, Institute of Teacher Education, Ipoh Campus, Perak, Malaysia. She has 16 years of experience as a special education teacher across four national schools in Malaysia. She has a deep understanding of the field, especially special education. Additionally, she holds a PhD in early childhood Special Education from Sultan Idris Education University, Tanjung Malim, Perak, which was awarded in, two, uh, in 2020. Her passion lies in advocating uh, for children's educational rights, particularly those with special needs, and she actively supports inclusive education. In this capacity, she serves as an advisor for the National Family Support Group for Children and People with Special Needs in Malaysia. One of her uh, significant contributions to the field is the development of the screening tool called SIMBES, S-Y-M-B-E-S-T, yeah? SIMBES, SIMBES, which she accomplished during a PhD research study in collaboration with the National Child Development Research Center at University Pendidikan or uh, Sultan Idris Education University yeah, in Para, Malaysia. The primary purpose of this tool is to identify children with symptomic behavior related to uh, disorders, enabling early identification and behavior intervention in mainstream early childhood education settings. Her aim is to provide valuable support to mainstream teachers, school administrators, and parents in fostering an inclusive learning environment. Huh? Aside from uh, her academic pursuits, Dr. Shailati, or well known as Dr. Shai, huh? is also an accomplished author. She has written many articles in international journals, okay, as what as I can uh, see, 
she has written over 12 research articles and published for children's picture books specifically designed for children with special needs and she's an expert in special education and uh, she told me that she is among the 50 selected for an interview for the global uh, uh global teacher award huh? so we would like to wish her good luck for the interview so that she become top uh, i mean in the group and to qualify for further uh, in the competition i guess, I guess so huh? she is well known for special education in malaysia and also uh, early childhood education huh? so for the participants later if you all have any question on special education please uh, forward the question to her okay shy dr shailati the floor is yours so you can start your slot now thank you very much dr shy thank you dr ganeshan for the lengthy and lovely uh, introduction about myself and uh, also a very good evening to miss uh, afia the chairperson of uh, today's uh, workshop and also to all the participants who are here today a uh, very good evening a warm welcome as well and i'm i feel very honored to be here with all of you to talk about a very unique and special research design um also one of the most favorite uh, research design um for me personally right before we go into um the talk of or the discussion of today's research design so let me introduce a little bit to the floor um what is ddr right i encountered ddr i i came to know about uh, design and development research uh, a couple of years ago about four to five years ago whereby at that time i was uh, i i was just starting my research uh, study i was just starting my uh, phd uh, research study so what happened was when I enrolled myself uh, for the PhD study, I already have a topic. I already know what I want to do. So what I want to, um, you know, what what is my, uh, based on my interest area, uh, as as well as my, um, based on my 16 years of experience in the uh, special education field. But what I didn't know much was, how do I carry out uh, or what, what may be the suitable um, research design that will give the optimal uh, outcome or the optimal results uh, of the research title that I have uh, in my mind at that time. So I was in search of the most suitable and appropriate uh, research method uh, for my uh, uh, favorable title, which I uh, put forth uh, to my supervisors. So that's how the search has actually led me uh, uh, to, uh, in, to, to get to know about design and development research in education. So uh, allow me, please allow me to continue with the slide. Mm, give me a second. So um, if the slides are not moving, please, uh, please just uh, inform me in the chat. So sometimes uh, I do encounter problems uh, while presenting in Google uh, Meet, uh, right? Uh, because of the slides are not moving, right? The title or the topic that we are going to discuss today is about, as I put there, an introduction to design and development research, which means that it is going to be, I'm going to explain, I'm going to brief, uh, I'm going to give you an overall idea what design and development research because it is a very big scope so we can't we won't be able to um, explore all the parts uh, in 30 to 40 minutes it's a very big scope but at least my intention is to give a rough idea or a overall idea you know a, a, a picture uh, to all of you um, especially the ones who have not really uh, you know known about design and development research uh, in education how we can use design and development research in education because when we speak about ddr ddr is being used in all the field not just education but in the last 10 years education field uh, ddr have become really really favorable and um, uh, well known in educational field right so what is ddr 
right? If you can see on the screen there, I have given a brief introduction, a brief, brief uh, a statement, two statements about what is DDR. But basically, DDR is by Richie and Klein, okay, 2007. He specified that it is a systematic study, a sister, a very, very systematic study of design, of development, and evaluation poses with the aim of establishing an empirical basis for the creation of instructional and also non-instructional products. Mm -hmm. So the key word here is products, which mm -hmm. means design and development research basically is used for developing not only product, but mm -hmm. such like models, modules, frameworks, mm -hmm. and many, many, many more. Right. So it is also disciplined in investigation conducted in the context of the development of a product or a program or a framework or a module or a model or it could be also um, it can be anything as long as you intend to develop something. Right. Um, and, and for the purpose of improving either the thing being developed or the developer. So there are quite a number of uh, development research label that have been used to refer to various kind of research approaches that are related to DDR work. So in the literature, one comes across many, many kind of research label. So more specific labels for such research are like research studies, research experiments, research de uh, uh, de uh, design research, uh, development or developmental research, uh, what else? Uh, formative research, formative inquiry, formative experiments, formative evaluation, action research, and also engineering research. So it, it is used in all the field. And education has become uh, a favorable. And in education, DDR has become quite favorable in the last uh, decade. So a process that it also so a process that encompasses activities of analyzing the needs, which means before we would want to develop something, we need to seek for the needs of the uh, product or the uh, work that we want to develop, right? And it also determining uh, determining required content, what we want to develop and what are the content or the construct or the items and so on. So uh, as well as establishing educational goals, designing materials to up to, to, to reach or to achieve certain objectives and uh, implementing and assessing uh, the effectiveness of the program, for instance, or the teaching materials. Right. So we, we, when we look at DDR in a simpler form, what is DDR? It's a study of process. It's a study of impact of a specific instructional design and also a development efforts. A situation where someone would like to perform activities of instructional design, someone would like to develop something or evaluate and study the process at the same time. And the third one is studying process of instructional design, develop and evaluate as a whole of a particular process components. Now we will look at what is DDR, why DDR, the types of DDR, and finally, to give you a clearer picture or more clarity about the research design, uh, we will look through one sample uh, uh, study which have employed uh, DDR, right? Now, DDR is being used, at, like I said just now, being used in many sub -disciplines. for instance, like curriculum. In curriculum, uh, the terms or the terminology used is development research, so the focus of development research in curriculum is to support the product development and to generate design and evaluate methods. It is also to inform decision making during the development and improve the product quality. And uh, another term used under curriculum subdiscipline is also formative research, whereby to inform decision making during development and also improve the product quality, which means when we uh, develop something, there will be a group of experts who will be actually advising on the um, on the content of the uh, of the product or of the program uh, of the framework that we are developing. And usually the experts uh, the panels are usually the experts of the field. Under the sub-discipline uh, uh, learning and instruction, the terms used are like design experiment, design-based research, uh, and also formative research, whereby the focus will be to develop product and inform the practice, to develop product, to contribute to theory and to inform practice, as well as to improve instructional design theories and also practice. And the third uh, sub-discipline, 
will be third and fourth sub-discipline will be the media and also the technology and as well as teacher education and didactics whereby the terms used are like development research and developmental research. Again, the focus might be to improve the instructional design to develop and evaluate to create theory and research based products and contribute to local instructional theory. So thus far, you might be coming across several uh, keywords like to develop, to evaluate, to create. So these are the closely related keywords to design and development research. Now, why DDR? Because DDR, as I, like I mentioned earlier, why DDR is a suitable research for development, um, uh, you know, for any, so any type of development uh, research, because it is a systematic study. When I say it's a systematic study, what I like about DDR is it has got phases to guide the researcher to go about it. So a researcher who employs DDR research for his or her research actually fully guided he is not lost she or he or she is not lost but they are fully guided through the phases whereby we will look into the phases uh, in a short while so it is a systematic study that provide systematic process of developmental research represented by three general uh, phases which are the analysis the design that analysis will be the first first phase the design and development will be the second phase the third phase will be the uh, evaluation or uh, 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 usability phase. And we also have one more extended phase that will be the uh, seeking for the effectiveness uh, of the model or the program or whatever that we have developed. Now, again, why DDR? which means why DDR is a suitable method if one would like to develop something. So as we know, it is a driver-driven research, which is an approach to conduct research that emphasizes practical application okay, and the use of technology and knowledge within a specific industry or domain. Like why it is suitable? Okay, it is suitable if we would like to generate new theories, right? It, this may occur when the researcher conduct experiments, tests, or observations in practical situations, and then he or she identify the phenomena or patterns that were not obviously understood. So this may then prompt them to develop a new theory that can actually explain the phenomena. So the first one, if you would like to generate a new theory. Second one, design and develop a new model. For instance, creation and enhancement of models, of tools, or technologies within a specific field. Right? So researchers may design and develop new models, for instance, that can be used in an industrial or a specialized domain which an emphasis, with an emphasis on practical suitability and also the ability to be applied in the real world scenarios. So that's the reason why it is being favorably used in the educational research. Right. So the third one would be the building new methods and processes for uh, implementing uh, the existing models or tools. Right. So this involves creating new methods and new processes for implementing existing models and tools, which means that uh, the researcher can actually re-evaluate existing process within an industry or domain and then develop uh, improved method or more efficient pro pro processes based on the knowledge and experience gained during the research. So we already have a model, we already have an existing framework, and it could be maybe that particular framework, some of the variables or the elements uh, may not be uh, or is insufficient to address the issues that we are looking at. So along with the existing model, we propose new or, uh, or additional elements to complete the existing model. So in situations like this, DDR will be a good option right now. So uh, all can follow me so far right now. Okay, can I uh, continue? Are the slides moving? Are the slides moving? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes. No yes thank you. So now we are, what you see on the screen is how to carry out DDR. So, so far we have seen a basic theories, a basic principles of DDR. Now we would see uh, how to carry out uh, DDR research. So there's a distinction between doing and studying design and development research. Right. So the distinctions can be described in terms of focus, techniques, 
and tools, what will be our focus, what we want to do, and what techniques that we are going to use to uh, gain insight about our focus. And finally, what are the tools that we are going to use? So for, to carry out DDR, first, we need to know uh, what uh, or how many types of DDR uh, uh, or, or uh, DDR have got two types. So which one our research is going to fall in? So the first type will be the more straightforward uh, developmental research. Uh, which is also called as formative research. The second type is the general analysis of a design, a development, or evaluation process as a whole of a particular uh, component. Now, to get a more clear picture about what uh, type 1 is and what type 2 uh, is, now look at the screen. Right. So type 1 are studies that is involving the process of developing specific products or programs which includes design development and also evaluation so the subject of the study is the knowledge gained from the development of a particular product and the analysis of the content or situation that supports the use of the product or the program or whatever that we are that we intend to develop and then the product development is also driven by technological advancement and the product development is also based on the application of the pedagogical elements okay that will be the type type one in type two it is a study concerning the design development or the assessment tools or the models and the framework. The study yields the design of models and frameworks that fully function as a research uh, instrument. Right. So these are the uh, description for type one and type two. Right. You might be wondering uh, what is the nature of what is the nature of type one or type two or what kind of study falls under type one and what kind of studies uh, fall under type 2. So let us, uh, let me give you a bit of uh, idea on the type 1 research title. Huh? So let us look at the type 1 research title. Develop, the title is develop a technology-based teaching model. So over here, what the researcher intend to develop, he or she intend to develop a teaching model, okay, which is technology-based. So that will promote active student participation and engagement in high school science classroom. So the model, the teaching model, which is technology based, is for the high school science subject uh, uh, students, right? So over here, what are the steps involved in type one? First, you would have to describe how to develop the model how to develop the model of technology-based teaching. Secondly, we will identify the elements in the model, which means the contents in the models, model or the items in the model, right? The third one, we implement. Once we have um, formed the model, the develop, design and develop the model, we implement the model. And finally, the phase, the final phase will be assessing the effectiveness uh, of the model. To what extent it benefits the student, the target population, and so on. So these are the four steps in uh, DDR research of type one. Now, how what about type two? Okay, so the type two research title will be development. Uh, of a gamification-based language learning framework for secondary school students. This is also a development. The previous one is also a development. Both are, we are going to develop. But what differs is the steps that involve in type 1 and type 2. Okay, right. In type 2, what happens here is the researcher would explain in detail every development phases which means the phases of, on how he developed the uh, framework. And then he will also report in details the method of each sub-studies. And finally, in step two, in type two, the research stops at reporting the usability of the framework. So one, two, three are basically same. But here, the missing is the fourth step that is the if, uh, assess the effectiveness. That means the, the, the framework will not we will stop at the usability uh, stage for instance who's going to use the uh, uh the framework okay right the teacher maybe in this research the teachers are the participants or the research respondents so the framework which have been developed will be given to the teachers to see how usable how feasible and usable the framework is uh, uh, for, uh for the uh, to be applied to the secondary school students. So this is the difference between the type 1 and the type 2 uh, uh, type two DDR research. 
Okay, right. Now I've moved on to the next uh, slide. So research procedures employed in DDR. Like I said earlier, this design have got three phases, systematic uh, three phases, whereby it guides the uh, researchers on how to go about the research. Right, now let us look at in the, in the research procedure, the common participants in the DDR. Okay, I have actually given uh, uh, the color variation here so that we can understand, we can see it clearly. So uh, let us look at uh, all the three type one, okay, the phase or the function, the product design and develop, product evaluation, validation of tools or technique. As for type one product design and development, who could be the participant, the designers, the developers, the clients, the clients means the users, right? And for the type one uh, product evaluation, who could be the participants, the evaluators, the clients, the learners, the instructors, and also the organization who's going to use uh, the product, right? In type one validation of tool or technique, designers, developers, evaluators, users, the other participant of the uh, research. Uh, and type two, for instance, like model development, who will be the participants, the designers, the developers, the evaluators, the researchers, the theorists. Type two model use, designers, developers, evaluators, clients, the other participants. Type two model validation, we would like to validate the model. So who would be the participant, the designers, the developers, the evaluators, clients, learners, instructors, and also organizers. Now, let us look at the common research methods that we use, uh, that have been used in DDR. So for instance, like product designing and development, research methodologies employed are like case study, in-depth interview, field observation, document analysis. Product evaluation phase uh, or function type one for product evaluation are the research methodologies employed are like evaluation, case study, survey, in-depth interview, document analysis. For validation of tools or techniques, the kind of research methodologies Evaluation, experimental method, expert review, in-depth interview, and also survey design. For type two research like model development, the kind of or the type of research methodologies like literature review, case study, survey, Delphi method, think aloud protocols. For model use, survey or in-depth interview or case study or a field of the observation or document analysis. And as for the model validation, you can use experimental design, in-depth interview, expert review, and also replication. So multiple research methodologies and designs vary in phases, right? So that is also why, that is also reason why DDR is also known as multi-method, right? Before, um, uh, uh, we, we, we also need to think of the main principles of DDR when we uh, when we decide to employ this uh, method uh, as our research design. So the first thing is clarifying the final art output uh, and product or the uh, outcomes. The second one would be utilizing a variety of research methods or techniques to determine the final, uh, sorry, to determine the solid final outcomes. The third will be the nature of the final outcomes is uniqueness and also the novelty of what you want to uh, develop. And then the third one, it comprises, sorry, the fourth one, yeah, comprises three or four phases of research depending on the intention, uh, the, depending on the objective uh, of the research, as long as it aligns with the final output, like I, I mentioned earlier, right? So it has got a neat analysis phase, design and development phase, it has got usability phase. So that already three phases and adding on to effectiveness phase. So three or four phases, right? And then it must be also clear whether you want to use DDR or your research is DDR type one or your research is DDR type uh, two. And then it must be very clearly rooted in the theories of underpinning the module or model. Whatever that you want to de um, develop, there must be a guiding uh, model, that, sorry, guiding theories, guiding framework, existi existing ones, right? And then it must be also uh, very clearly outlined with the selected models as development templates. So in every, uh, uh, when, when you want to develop a model, there must be a development template which is actually assisting the development process. Uh, same goes if you want to develop a program or you want to develop a tool and so on. So the selection, the last 
um, a main principle that we need to uh, consider is the selection of panel experts must be relevant to what is to be studied. Right? Who is going to evaluate what you have developed? So the experts must be are the real experts, the experts who are uh, real experts in the field. For instance, uh, they must be at least five years of experience in the field uh, that uh, your research uh, related to your research. Uh, five continuous years. They must be at least. They must have at least five. Uh, five years of continuous experience in the related field. Then only they can be selected as, uh, as our uh, panel experts to validate uh, our, uh, you know, the products or the tools or the uh, framework that we are going to develop. Right now, we will go straight away into the phases of VDR. Like I said earlier, okay, it has got three main phases and sometimes depending on your research objectives and your intention, it can also go up to fourth phase and recently in the last five years um, especially for PhD students uh, supervisors uh, panels are actually expecting uh, uh, research students to go up to the evaluation uh, phase up to fourth phase uh, like when I was doing my PhD uh, I was allowed to my my research was ex ex accepted up to third phase but now I see that um, third phase is insufficient and panels expect researchers to go uh, you know further uh, further far right so the first phase is the need analysis phase before we develop something let it be a model a framework or anything that we would like to develop right we need to seek for the uh, need of that particular product in the field if you are developing that particular uh, product for teachers then we need to seek for teachers opinion uh, whether there is a need for such product or not right so uh, the first phase is the need analysis phase so this phase is a very very crucial phase which will be guiding uh, you know, which will be guiding to the design and development phase, which will actually uh, justify why you need to design and develop uh, such thing, right? Otherwise, uh, panels will be asking of us. Otherwise, people will be asking when there is already an existing tool or existing uh, program as such, why you need to, why we need another one. So, need analysis is a very, very important, a crucial phase whereby it will help us to identify the research issue conducted in the study uh, that is going to be used to shape the model or the, or the whatever the product or anything that you want to develop. And then that will be guiding us to the second phase that will be the designing and the development phase. Over here, it based on the, uh, based on the, sometimes in the need analysis, some research studies, if you look into, uh, they will be actually proposing uh, especially the research studies whereby there's already an existing model, for instance, and now uh, they want to add on the elements in the model. So in the need analysis, usually uh, what the researcher will do, the researcher will, will actually list down, list out uh, the newly added elements of the model uh, and then would be seeking um, the users or the, the targeted population's opinion on whether there is a need to add these elements in the existing model okay that's one type of need analysis that can be done another type of need analysis is actually we want to know we already know that literature gives us an insight that uh, there is no such tool in the field or in the, in our current setting and there is a high need uh, for us to develop so what we do here in the need analysis is we evaluate the current practice Okay, we evaluate, for instance, say you would like, we would want to develop a screening tool to identify children with special needs. So, and you know that in your setting, there is no screening tool in the educational setting for teachers. And that's the reason why you would like to um, uh, develop one. So over here, what would you do is uh, in the need analysis stage, you may want to uh, uh, see or you may want to get some uh, insight or idea on what are the current practice of teachers in identifying children with uh, developmental delay. So you may have uh, about three constructs uh, or three sections on uh, on different different uh, aspects to, to get to know what are the current practice. And the fourth aspect or the fourth session maybe you will be asking the teachers, do you need 
a screening tool or not, uh, or if I want to develop such a screening tool, uh, what uh, you know, uh, what would be your opinion in the in the neediness of it? So there are two ways of doing need analysis. Again, it comes back to to what you want to develop and your research objective. So based on the need analysis insight that we get, which will be justifying the need for us to design and develop over here. Besides the insight we get from the order findings we get from the need analysis, we also the content of this phase uh, two is also uh, through literature review. So we can also rely on the literature review whether there is a need to develop such product or not, or such framework or not. Secondly, we can also do uh, uh based on the literature review we can actually get a confirmed constructs or items uh, uh which is uh, related to what you want to develop okay and then you can do we can do uh, um uh, uh, you know we can have an experts interview okay we interview the experts to see whether uh, these constructs or these items are relevant uh, to the product or to the framework that we want to develop and finally over here to to process to get a consensus now, of the experts, a collective consensus of the ex experts of the uh, developmental stages or developmental phases that is involved uh, in the design and development phase, we select some methods or techniques uh, uh, to uh, validate uh, the reliability of the proposed uh, items in the uh, module or in the framework. Right. And the, and the third phase is the aim is to assess the usability or the feasibility of the developed product, developed model or developed framework. Now we have developed everything uh, with the experts view in, in, in phase two. Now we want to see to what extent the product that we have developed is usable in the education setting, for instance. OK, right. So what we here we will do, we will identify the population. Right? Who are we? Uh, who are we going to give, or who are the target population of our product? Say teachers. So, so the, the 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 usability test will go to the educators who are going to use the framework in the classroom. Right over here, also we have several methods, techniques to actually uh, gain. Uh, a collective consensus on the usability or the feasibility of the product. Now, the fourth phase is the effectiveness. Okay. Now, I have asked the teachers, okay, how usable is this product or how usable is this module? Now, I want to see whether the module is effective, effective or not when I've been applied to the students. So, in what way does the product develop meet and fail to meet the requirements of the specified um, Population and after that, what we do, we make improvisation or we make improvement and and uh, so on, right? Okay, I'm I moved to a, another slide. Okay, this is a uh, 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 an infographic on uh, DDR and multi method. Earlier, I mentioned that uh, in DDR, DDR is also known as multi multi method because why? Because it's a systematic and flex flexible variety of methods, uh, uh, and it also utilizes a diverse range of methods to determine solid and results right in each phase you have options uh, how you're going to um, process your findings okay there are several methods uh, that we may use fuzzy delphi method for instance fuzzy delphi methods are usually um, in many research it is usually used in a second phase that is a design and development research in some research whereby they want to add on elements to improvise or uh, to uh, complete uh, 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 the existing models or framework fuzzy delphi method is also used in phase one an FDM or fuzzy delphi method is also used in the third phase. That means, which means the uh, usability in the usability uh, uh, phase, okay, to gain uh, experts consensus or the population, the users consensus on to what extent the model or the product is feasible to be applied. So the approach is a quantitative approach. Uh, we have scholars Ishikawa and Lutfi Zadeh. The software. Uh, for fuzzy delphi there is an excel uh, build excel uh, templates by um, by researchers mm, and why because why we use fdm because we want to reach expert con experts consensus and the res respondents in fuzzy delphi methods are usually the experts of the field like i said earlier so it, they must have at least five years of uh, experience and there are seven uh, guiding steps in FDM method and the output data ranking items based on experts consensus. Okay, for instance, if you are um, 
if you are developing a screening tool and a, a fuzzy Delphi method will actually give you uh, a results which construct will go first and under each construct which items will go first so it will actually help you to rank the items right besides fuzzy Delphi method uh, IFM is also applicable to be used in DDR research uh, in any of the phases usually in phase four and phase three Right. So the approach is a qualitative approach and we have scholars, uh, Walfred, uh, the software. Yes, they have a, a confirmed software called Concept Star. Uh, why ISM? It is also to seek for experts perspective to address complex problems. And the respondents here, they are also experts in the field. And here they have about five to six conditions. And another um, uh, method is AHP and ANP. It's a quantitative method. It, there, there is a software to analyze the findings, which is called super decision software. And why we use this method? Because we would want to get experts' judgment. The respondents are also experts. The condition, 0 0.1 value inconsistency. Okay, right. Then it is, it is considered that the item is ac accepted. Right. And the final one, not final one, there are many more, but some I have uh, collected and put it here um, in case the participants would like to do a deeper uh, reading on this later on. Right. So the, the last one is nominal group technique, uh, NGT. In my research, I used FDM and I used NGT. Right. Uh, it is a semi-quantitative. Uh, and then they have, yeah, the, the, the analysis method of NGT is through Excel. That's an Excel template. And why NGT? Because we want to know uh, to what extent the, the item or the product that we have developed is usable. And the respondents are actually the users, the research participants. They are not experts. They are the users who have been in the field. Uh, also, the criteria to select the experts must be at least more than five years. Okay, if they are teachers, teachers must have served uh, in that particular field, in that particular subject that you have um, that you have uh, um, uh, you know developed the product for at least five years, and then uh, the condition will be zero point. That means seventy percent above the item is uh, accepted, right? Okay, so um, now to understand better. How is this DDR research is used in research study? Now, I'm just going to give a very uh, a short, briefly, I, I think it's about time. I'm going to give a very brief, give you a brief idea on how DDR is used, the study flow uh, of DDR research. So the title is Development of Symptomatic Behavior Screening to SIMBAS for Early Identification of Developmental Delays Among Young Children, right? Just like the other research, we will have a background of the study of the research. So this research is actually intent to develop a screening tool uh, for the children aged three to four years old, uh, which is uh, whereby through, uh, through observing their behavior, so they have symptomatic behavior. So we are going to build a, a screening tool for the mainstream educators to actually identify whether the symptomatic behaviors, whether the behaviors are symptomatic or asymptomatic, whether the behaviors are a behavior of a typical child or a behavior of a special child. So that is the intention of developing this screening tool. And in Malaysia, for instance, Education sector, we don't really have a proper screening tool for early identification because uh, diagnosis totally or uh, identification of children with special needs are shouldered by the Ministry of Education. But literature says early identification can be done by uh, teachers, uh, especially teachers who are teaching in the mainstream school. So here, just like uh, the background of study, we have problem statement, which is actually contributing to why we need to um, uh, why why the researcher uh, decided to develop uh, such product or why the researcher de uh, decided to come up with such product and it also over here also it will give an insight uh, to the reader that there is no such screening tool that is the reason at, at the current uh, point and that's the reason why researcher wants to uh, develop that particular product right and then we have purpose objective and research questions now here there is a special way of writing the purpose of the study the objective of the study and the research question like if you look at the screen the purpose of the study for instance i'll read out to you to develop a screening tool that identifies symptomatic behavior to developmental delays among young children in ece centers ece means early childhood education centers in malaysia and the objective also related to 
the purpose of the study. So the sentences are more or less same, yeah, to develop a screening tool that identifies symptomatic behaviors to developmental delays among children aged three to four years. Here, here we have already specified the population, the target group of the uh, screening tool. And then when we go to the research question in phase one, of course, this is the main research question in phase one. Uh, in phase one, the need analysis phase, there will be uh, sub questions uh, which will be actually contributing uh, to the um, or uh, you know will, will be helping the researcher to find the uh, uh, information that he or she needs. So the research question: What are the needs to develop a screening tool to identify children's behavior problem in the mainstream? So in my research, what I did for the need analysis, it was a survey design, right? It's a quantitative survey design. Uh, what I did was uh, um, I seeked for the current practice of teachers in identifying children with special needs in their setting. So I had section A, section B, section C. What are the uh, reinforcements the teachers are giving? Uh, what kind of method they use to manage children's behavior in the classroom? Uh, these are sort of the sections that I had. And the final session is the, the needs to develop. Yeah, but I was asking the teachers, uh, do you need a screening tool, a formal screening tool uh, to help you to identify identify whether the behavior is a typical behavior or a symptomatic behavior. And then when you go to the second uh, phase, that is the design and development phase, the research question, the purpose and the objective must match, which means to identify the needs of a screening tool for ECE educators to identify. So to identify the, and the objective would be the identifying to identify the needs of a screening tool for ECE educators. And when you go to the research question, what is the design and development model of the screening tool to assess children's symptomatic behavior? And the last purpose, the last objective will be to test the suitability. Like I said, my research stopped at the phase three. So mine will be um, type two uh, DDR research. So here I wanted to test the suitability and the usability of the screening tool. And the research question, what is the usability and suitability of the screening tool to screen children with symptomatic behaviors? So there is a pattern actually to write purpose, objective, and research questions of uh, DDR research. That's why I say it is so, 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 um, uh, not to say easy, but it is so um, helpful to the researchers because the stages or the phases are, uh, researchers are guided to go through by the phases, right? Okay, so again, we also have literature review, which is actually based on the literature review that will decide whether we need to develop the tool or not, or develop the, pro, uh, the, the framework or not. And then, and, and then we have a theoretical framework of the study in DDR. So what will be your theoretical framework? Based on your theoretical framework, you will be developing your tool and then the conceptual framework. So the methodology, like I said earlier uh, just now, so mine is a type two uh, DDR research. So I had a need analysis phase one. So I had 434 educators who are teaching uh, age three and four uh, children. And then it was a descriptive analysis, which was done with SPSF. Uh, and I seek for, I, I went, for a mean value and standard deviation. And I had a need analysis survey question. And then we did a pilot testing, just like any other research. We, we administered the uh, survey question. We did a pilot testing. And then we administered the uh, survey question to the uh, respondents. And then I had the phase two, which is the design and development phase. In this phase, I had ex uh, 18 experts. right? to gain a group consensus on the constructs and items of SIMBEST. And these 18 experts were actually are from, uh, they had uh, about 10 to 20 years of experience in the field of uh, developmental delays. And they were doc pediatricians, they were clinical psychologists, uh, they were uh, educators, mainstream educators, they were early interventionists, they were um, uh, uh, early childhood educators. And these are my, uh, they are my experts. And then here I use the Fuzzy Delphi method. Right? And in the third uh, phase, that is the usability test, I had 21 early childhood educators, uh, whereby um, they had experienced more than five years. Uh, they are mainstream teachers and experienced more than five years working with, particularly working with three to four years old students. And here I use the uh, modified uh, uh, nominal group technique method, the NGT, which I mentioned earlier, right? Okay, and also this is the design and development. I also explained how I developed the screening tool. What, where did I get the constructs from where I got the constructs? So the constructs of are the five developmental domains from the theories, 
for such as like maturation theory, cognitive theory, and also there is a framework, there is a practice in a, a early childhood education that is developmentally appropriate practice. So this is how my constructs of my best came from. And then the items I took from which, um, uh, you know, from where there's, there was a guideline. So I took that from there. And not only that, I also had a focus group discussion with several pediatricians to actually see whether uh, the domains, the constructs and the items are relevant or not before giving it to the uh, 18 experts, right? So we need to have that phase to explain how we develop the uh, whatever product or framework that we have been doing. And based on this, I came up with the conceptional framework of the study. DDR research will must have a conceptual framework of the study. So if you look at the, the, the tool came from two theories and one framework, and then that's how I design and develop the model of SIMBEST and then the three guiding phases and uh, the three guiding phases, how, what are the scores or what are the uh, research methods that I have employed, like mean score, SPSS, uh, and then later literature review, the group discussion, the fuzzy Delphi method in phase two, and in phase three, the uh, nominal group technique. And then based on all these uh, insights on these findings, and I got the, uh, how I got the main construct of SIMBEST and finally the development of SIMBEST. So this is how we write the findings, right? Mm, according to the research questions, we write the findings and the usability test of the findings and then the contribution. So this design research is actually the novelty. Uh, uh, it's a fully web app uh, tool. And then it has also contributed in terms of theories. And finally, the method that we have used uh, to develop a, uh, a design and development research, right? Especially developing tool. Not many research were there. Uh, I mean, there were many development developing tool research out there, but uh, uh, at the point of time that I was uh, developing the tool, uh, FDM was quite uh, new. Okay, not many research use FDM to develop tools, right? Especially screening tools and the layout. Right. And as, as usual, the limitations, recommendation and conclusion. So it is just like any other research, but it is more systematic. The way the flow of the research is just like how we write other research. Right. But in summary, the benefit of DDR research, it includes its practicality, innovation, collaboration, efficiency, and also its potential to drive immediate and meaningful impact in various fields. Right. Thank you so much. I hope that I have given <laughs> enough ideas. Uh, about the research method and how it has been how it has been used uh, in in studies right any questions dr ganesan uh okay yeah. thank you thank you very much huh, dr shailati a very good uh, uh, presentation huh, on the topic of ddr huh, uh, design and development research in education so uh <clears throat> I mean, what I can see here is uh, actually from your research, uh, from your research topic uh, for your PhD, right? Development of symptomatic behavior screening tool. So meaning here is uh, this research, uh, design and development research, DDR is uh, mainly focused on how to design a tool, right? Okay. It's not only to tool, Dr. Ganesan. It can be anything. It can be a module, anything. model, framework. It can be model. anything. Okay. Any type of development research. Any type of development research, you need to design either a tool or any other thing which is related to the topic concern, right? So can if I... If you uh, want to design anything or develop anything, you can you can use DDR. What is actually symptomatic behavior, Dr. Shai? Symptomatic behavior. Okay, symptomatic behavior means... Um, when there are, I mean, children's behavior, it has got a range actually, right? So sometimes yeah. a behavior of aggression, right? Okay, every, all children at the age of three to four, they will have aggression to a certain extent. But what decides whether it is a symptomatic aggression or a symptomatic behavior or a typical behavior is the duration, is the exaggeration of the behavior to how long the behavior is exaggerated, is being exaggerated, or how repetitive the behavior is. So based on the exaggeration and the repetition, that's how we decide whether the behavior is a typical behavior or a symptomatic behavior. We need to know the, 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 the line, the boundary, or the, the we need to draw the line, Dr. Ganesan. Otherwise, we'll be telling all the children to be special, or we will be saying 
all the special children are having normal behavior they are normal so we don't want we want to we want to give a clear picture to the educators uh, which one is a symptomatic behavior and which behavior is a typical behavior based on the exaggeration and the repetition of the behavior so meaning here is your from your research you managed to design a tool right to yes, identify a tool uh, to identify the symptomatic behavior among children of uh, your research is three to four years old right yes three to four years old Correct. are these special needs are these special needs uh, children or how or okay, normal they, children? Are, they are children enrolled in normal school regular okay. schools regular All preschools right. whereby okay. there is no diagnosis yet from the doctor or parents oh, are no. still okay. not very clear whether they are special or not but the teachers are having a bit of doubt but teachers can't really say uh, under what ground teacher may say oh your child might be special and or not so this tool is actually to guide the teachers to identify and we don't want the teacher to take advantage also some children are very active but they may not be special so we want everybody in the setting to be clear whether they are special or they are uh, they are typical. So Dr. Ganeshan, for your information, the tool is not a diagnostic tool. The tool will not give the teacher any diagnosis. The tool will okay, only okay. Indi indicate the uh, red flags based on the, uh, and on the items, which will actually help the teacher to convey the message to the parent uh, and, and ask and, and request the parents to go for the formal assessment. Clinical okay, assessment. All right, all right. I understand better now. I understand better now. I understand better. Okay, uh, for another any other participants? Will, another day we will dissect the, uh, 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 I mean, we will talk more about the tool. Another day. Yeah. <laughs> okay, any other question from the floor? From other participants? Any other question? Any other question? If no question, I think I can hand over to the host, huh? Afia. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So now I okay. So now I invite Anish to introduce the second speaker, Dr. K. Chashiveta. Over to you, Anish. Yeah. Thank you, Afia. Uh, Dr. K. Uh, Shashi Lega, ma'am, uh, did her uh, MA in uh, Sausalja College, Madre, and young Phil in Tangraga College, and PhD did in Madre Kamraj University. She had her teaching experience more than 22 years. She had attended many national and international conferences. Ma'am, I worked as a student professor in Velmole College of Engineering and Technology, Madre, and the American College, Madre. Ma'am is currently working as head of the department and the chairperson admission in Manikam uh, Ramaswamy College of Arts and Science from the House of Thrairega School of Management. We welcome you, ma'am, for the session. Thank you so much for the brief introduction, sir. Uh, good evening, participants. And we'll be taking up the session on soft skills today. Let me present my screen. Once it is shared, I'll start my presentation. Uh, the title for this session is soft skills and uh, for researchers uh, we require uh, many skills and uh, even for teachers and uh, for in, irrespective of the domain almost employees employers students researchers and uh, uh, even the teachers everybody requires soft skills and nowadays uh, we come across uh, people taking up uh, uh, soft skill training, offering soft skill training, and attending soft skill training. Uh, 
in a so it appears soft skills as a very prominent space which has occupied a prominent space in academia as well as in industry so let us see what is the soft skills what are the soft skills why it is important for us to acquire soft skills the this slide will give you a quick view about uh, the soft skills see soft skills is nothing but how you deal with people and present yourself to different people so uh, if i have to make a kind of explanation over here soft skills in other words could be named as people skills also again uh, irrespective of our uh, designation and position uh, see everywhere we will be dealing with people so how we deal with the people from different background from different age group it's it is going to be a mixed age group and from same domain from other domains it varies it totally varies so how we deal with people and how we present ourselves that that is very important and it comes under soft skills hence i termed it as people skill also by being aware of oneself and living consciously see uh, uh, to make you understand about uh, this expression uh, regarding soft skills uh, uh, sometimes uh, we do things mechanically sometimes uh, auto mechanism uh, so because it has formed as habitual uh, habits we do many things but in spite of that uh, being uh, uh, since uh, we are human beings we should be aware of ourselves what we are doing how what are the works how we apply ourselves to different tasks and assignments that matters so that i'm bringing over here as being aware of oneself and living consciously in a very superficial uh, level because uh, this itself uh, has a very deeper meaning aware of oneself no like know thyself uh, said by socrates but uh, at least uh, we could uh, try to know what uh, we are the, the roles we have to play in different places and how consciously we are making our life that is another importance of skills then personal values this determines the character of any human being and we come across many people in our life and if you make an observation or if you make a kind of analysis we value we respect we appreciate people not for their designation not for their power not for the asset they possess apart from all these things we respect we appreciate and we uh, trust people because of their values because of the values they possess so uh, values here we can equate it with our characteristic features so when you have your own personal values which means you possess good amount of soft skills that we can put it that way then interpersonal values again uh, here there is a role for empathy as uh, we all know uh, uh, what is that sympathy and what is this empathy uh, there is no point in sympathizing with people it is better to empathize with our fellow beings when we empathize with the, our fellow beings uh, we are aware of uh, their suffering their pain and other thing so here interpersonal values is uh, like uh, how i feel certain things the same way i perceive it with the third party also that we call it as interpersonal skills and again here also there is no role play uh, role for qualification designation and uh, a domain also deal breaker and in job interview see and uh, when it comes to career part when it has come to career part uh, the one who possesses soft skill 
is definitely making a, a quantum leap in the job interviews. And it is a kind of a performance appraisal also. So uh, either to enter a job or to sustain in the job or for promotions or for any pay hikes or position hikes, when people make a performance appraisal, they will not even just look into the contribution. They'll be looking to the details of how uh, we or else how a candidate carried out the job with the different people in different situations. That's what we mean over here as performance appraisal. All right. See, when it is termed in the slide, it appears to be a very simple matter, like uh, uh, people skill, aware of ourselves, personal values, inter interpersonal values, and it is thoroughly required for job interview and to continue or sustain in the job, it acts like a, a performance appraisal, this, that. Now, the next question is, is soft skills easy to acquire? Or is it tough to acquire? If it is easy to acquire, then everybody will be a managing director. Nobody would continue us in the uh, 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 media curve positions. So let us make uh, take a deep analysis of soft skills and whether it is or what are the means to acquire it to be successful in our own field. So here. I just make a note that we are checking soft skills in connection with our roles. See, for example, at present, I play a role of a professor. So I connect it with my profession. The participants, your domain may be a very different domain. Many might be a researchers of different field. So you could connect how soft skills, possession of uh, soft skills or how the uh, uh, acquisition of soft skill is going to develop your personality. In that aspect, we are going to uh, see the rest of the uh, session. All right. Uh, friends, it's very clear. Uh, even the previous slide itself, it uh, one point is very clear that a soft skill is it could be inferred as people skill also. Now, actually, it is interpersonal skill and a personality triad. Uh, see, if I have to give an example, who we like to meet in the early morning when we reach our workplace or when we reach the uh, college or uh, when we step out of our house, we would like to see people with happy faces. If not with happy faces, at least, yes, uh, uh, if I greet, uh, the, I should get a response. And uh, if there is no response, uh, then it should, uh, there would be a question inside my mind. Uh, why, what happened? Uh, why this guy is not uh, uh, responding to my greeting? Should I continue to greet this person? All these questions naturally comes into our mind. See, so... When we uh, greet someone, we want it to be reciprocated. It may happen or it may not happen. But still, when we want to uh, continue and uh, to develop our soft skills, uh, it is one way to achieve through interpersonal skills. And I said about uh, empathize with people also. So what, when we want to, develop soft skills, what we can train is a very simple rules. So ignore when you, you expect people to reciprocate for a greeting message. When it is not reciprocated, it's not necessary that I have to uh, show a long face to that X or Y. Instead, I can ignore the person's behavior in that moment. Yes. And if I leave that behavior in that moment, we are developing our soft skills. So the example given over here uh, to develop interpersonal skill as part of soft skill is greeting a person when we, are, uh, when we step out of our home, 
it may be in a workplace or it may be in your educational institution when our greeting message is not reciprocal if it is reciprocated it is going to be a it is going we are going to have a good morning uh, work vibe if it doesn't take place uh, let's not get personally upset uh, and uh, what we are expected to to do is uh, ignore the action of the person underline ignore the action of the person in that moment not ignoring a person or not ignoring the uh, personality over there i believe i uh, it is now clear how to ignore the action of the people in the moment maybe uh, i greet i continue to greet the same person next day and the following days also and uh, if the person is not uh, uh, have some uh, if if uh, if the person started reciprocating it means we are developing a relationship yes very particularly it happens it it is a quality expected in the workplace it is a social skill it is slowly interpersonal skill is becoming a social skill also so when in the social uh, uh, setting it is very important to develop the interpersonal skills so sometimes there may be a reciprocation or they, there may not be a reciprocation but since you wanted to possess soft skills and you wanted to be successful you continue to do your good practices being adults we must be knowing a set of good practices and set of bad practices so it is a nature sometimes it is a slight ego see everybody i am greeting though he is my boss even after me greeting him every morning he is not even nodding my nodding his head why should i greet him again and again let's not have this room for such kind of negativity yes instead all right he might not have noticed it or he might be preoccupied this way let's not be judgmental let's not be judgmental so this just an example only greeting message is just an example uh, the situation only you can put it to uh, put it in various situations uh, now let's take uh, maybe sometimes uh, we would like to have some simple help from our uh, 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 our colleagues sometimes the help may be immediately accepted and uh, people would uh, readily do that good then which means uh, it is a good sign and uh, there are other ways also the same uh, when when you requested someone to help uh, but uh, if uh, x or y denied that uh, we should uh, go little beyond and uh, try to understand why they are not in a position to help us so when we make analysis when we develop analytical skills that would also become part of your soft skills see when we develop such nature such nature yes and we will never be judgmental and there won't be it is like we we, uh, we can understand that we retain a peace of mind every moment whether it is a lighter moment or a very rough sail whatever it may be if we develop a such nature and such quality in our mind we could understand that have a, a calmness calmness in our the entire nervous system so all right so if a person is not uh, helping if a person is not helping let's not get upset and maybe we should find ways how to get our things done by asking the same kind of help to somebody else and you could have noticed another important thing if you are valued if you have a, if you possess good qualities even when people are not in a position to help may suggest you to approach somebody else to get the work done so that is another 
a simple example i would like to give so when someone is not in a position to help you uh, don't conclude that uh, he or she is a useless fellow traitor uh, and betrayer we use all strong uh, adjectives to describe the nature of people because it is a human nature when we expect something from x or y we want it to get it done yes but it will not happen all the time so when it doesn't take place don't judge the people don't uh, uh, just like that uh, use words to describe them describe their nature instead uh, if we understand if we make a little analysis maybe the times the situation there are several factors yes so that that could be one of the reasons for that particular person for not rendering the support to us so this understanding would give a peace of mind to us all right so i guess this example would also have given you a kind of idea about the interpersonal skills then uh, we will take up the next point creates positive and functional work environment makes the organis organization highly competitive see uh, uh, when you possess soft skills and when your team possess uh, soft skills because human emotions are contagious when i laugh when i smile and naturally uh, the next person would also smile at me so when you have a soft skill it creates a very positive and functional work environment and it makes the workplace a very competitive and enjoyable place uh, hence soft skill is recommended irrespective of the demand now let's quickly try to understand the difference between hard uh, soft skills and hard skills hard skills are described as technical skills yes am i audible yes ma'am yes yes ma'am yes, yes, ma please go all ahead. right okay yes my slide also visible right yeah yeah it is ah fine uh so uh, uh see the uh, the hard skills are nothing but the technical skills and uh, hard skills are measurable hard skills are measurable that we uh, study and uh, we uh, sometimes uh, see for example uh, uh, some uh, repair happen and you are able to fix it then it comes under hard skills and it is a technical skill uh, so uh, such things we call it as technical skills it defines a person's ability and it will help us to understand how he is good at that particular job whereas soft skills are personality traits which cannot be outwardly seen which cannot be measured only we could realize that but the soft skill question should be more when it comes to uh, comes in terms of job or else in any profession matters so and uh, fine so uh, any individual matters for any individual matters uh, uh, a human being as a combination uh, possess equal amount of hard skills and soft skills but nowadays the academia as well as industry looks for a candidate with the more with the more soft skill quotient so if you list out the soft skills in your resume along with your hard skills along with your technical skills then you are the sure shot in the definitely you are the sure shot in the job market and it will open many doors new doors of opportunity in interview process as well as in your profession see let us see is yes, uh, uh, actually is uh, speaking when we google the list of uh, soft skills uh, and the number of uh, soft skills uh, it says uh, 20 62 soft skills are there this that but uh, uh, for this presentation i just noted down 
the top soft skills which are in high demand in any field. And the first come among the top soft skill is communication. Uh, friends, when it is communication, it is how clearly we express our, our ideas, our opinions. It is uh, how uh, how uh, it is not always in English language. It should be in your mother tongue also, in your vernacular language also. When your uh, 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 communication in your vernacular language is very clear, simple, straight, then it is going to be followed in any number of languages which you uh, practice in your workplace. So communication, let's not get always a connect with, connected with the English language skill or English speaking skill. Communication is exchange of ideas, sharing our opinion, uh, uh, sharing our ideas. It could be uh, it could be in our vernacular language also. So always make your statements complete. Yes, nowadays, uh, very often we come across incomplete communication. Very particularly, uh, uh, the teaching fraternity uh, might have seen uh, this kind of syndrome with the present learners. Uh, they don't, the uh, present generation, uh, don't have the tendency of giving complete details. They perceive something in their mind and they pass only incomplete information. Rest of the information, they assume the opposite party, the opponent may understand. See, that is not communication. It is something like uh, uh, when someone speaks and uh, the listener has to understand it. So in such a way, we should make our communication. So break your ideas, break your communication into small, small statements, simple and straight uh, statements. Five, three words for a sentence will do to make a communication effective, simple and straight. When we practice this kind of communication in our vernacular language, naturally it will be uh, it will be practiced when we speak official language or any foreign language even english language matters so communication should be yes not leaving it to assumption presenting a complete detail that's what i mean over uh, communication here communication is not uh, something of uh, a flare over the language, it is not just fluency or accuracy, it is how clear the information has been shared it is called communication. And the next triad or the next top soft skill is leadership. Is uh, See, leadership doesn't mean the top rank always. It is about how you lead a task, how you set an example to take up a task, how quick you are able to gel with your colleagues, your team members, that decides leadership. Many examples could be quoted from sports. Yes, um, if I have to quote an example from cricket, Dhoni has been considered as the, the coolest captain. Yes, which means uh, as a leader, as a leader, he understood the pulse of his team members. He makes a quick analysis of the situations. Accordingly, he takes decisions in the field. So it helps the team to perform well. The task was successful. Then it could be called leadership. Sometimes the leadership is not connected with the designation. It is not connected with the topmost uh, in the hierarchy order. It is not always with the topest person. It could be from anyone. And uh, when you possess leadership, you listen to someone in the way at a fag end of your team also, because idea could be generated from any time and from any mind. So leadership is setting an example, listening to everyone and 
acting accordingly and it varies case to case and should know how to prioritize things also uh, maybe in uh, after a few slides uh, there is going to be uh, another kind of example for this leadership quality then decision making uh, when it is decision making being uh, 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 actually sometimes we believe our gut feeling and we make decisions sometimes we make a thorough study of it and make a decision sometimes we make a very elaborate discussion with the everyone in our family finally we would go for a consensus and that also we call it uh, bring it as decision making uh see in life it is not uh, every decision should be right it, there are there are chances uh, to make wrong decisions also it is also part of the life that is also that also gives experience how we perceive it and how we come out of that matters so but if it is an individual it is not going to affect the uh, group so uh, uh, personal decision making and uh, decision making for the team varies so we, we have to make an analysis when it is not personal and if it is for a group or if it is for a community if it is for a family if it if it involves one more person then definitely the decision making shouldn't be hasty and okay let's believe our intuition let's believe our gut feeling but instead of that we should make a very uh, uh, analysis about the pros and cons of the decision that's what that's how we have to understand decision making over here and teamwork uh those days those days uh, uh, when we mean team it is the same set of people if you go to your office you have to work with the same set of people nowadays it isn't based on the assignments uh based on the projects the team is not going to be the fixed team it is going to be new new team every time yes uh, and uh, different different roles also so unless i have or we possess the adaptability uh, to quickly uh, cha uh, gel with the new team and uh, quickly try to adopt with the new environment it is we aren't going to be successful and uh, uh when individuals uh, when i stick on to my priority then i am not a team player then i am not fit for the teamwork but nowadays it it goes as a teamwork only any work matters any work matters it is not going to be a kind of individual achievement let us take up the uh, launch of uh, uh, the chandrayaan 3 Uh, we though there is one director though there is one mission director nobody has uh, congratulated just the uh, mission director alone mission director is the face of a huge team and a mission director was congratulated and appreciated for the effort of the team he was so successful with his leadership he was so successful with his communication with the team and with his superiors and the decisions whatever he has taken was very favorable for the team that's what we call it as teamwork and that, that that's how we are expected to uh, develop teamwork skill also team spirit and team working with the different set of people see and when we work with the a new set of people or a known set of people definitely there when when there are two and more human beings involved it is going to be little complicated and little complexity naturally uh, uh, that is the nature of human beings irrespective of that as i told you earlier let's not ignore any person in our life 
but let's learn to ignore the action uh, of that particular person in that moment if we develop that skill then we can very easily evolve ourselves as a team worker also then it comes a uh, time management um and uh, time management we all one way or other way we all know the importance of time uh, we say uh, we can give uh, any number of lecture when it comes to time management to, to others but how uh, uh, effectively we follow time management because everybody has got the 24 hours it is not that uh, uh, the project manager has got 40, 48 hours and the peon got or the cleric got, uh, clerk got, got uh, some uh, 20 hours. It isn't, it is not so. Universally, it is 24 hours. So how we uh, prioritize our works, task, assignments, uh, and how we make uh, our works distributed, uh, that matters. That comes as uh, time management. And if you are able to take up our time management successfully, it is not just punctual, it is a regularity. A regularity, punctuality comes under time management. When I commit my, uh, when I am so sincere to my works, uh, when I am committed to my own uh, assignments, uh, naturally, things will be put it in order. The timeline is going to be framed in such a way. So time management is also under, uh, comes under tops of skills, uh, which Indians lag a bit uh, when it comes to time management. Uh, uh, comparing to other countrymen, Indians lag time management. We all agree on that part. Uh, probably uh, we all have to be little more conscious with this time management and the last one comes under uh, the tops of skills for job sector is creativity and problem solving uh, nowadays uh, it is not uh, everybody got bored with the fixed patterns every time we want new new patterns uh, even uh, uh, the, uh, the we would have seen uh, uh, idlis are not uh, shouldn't need not be circular nowadays uh, you could have seen uh, idli plates with the different shapes uh, there are square shapes rectangle shapes and heart shapes like that it means uh, human mind likes differences we appreciate creativity we might not explicitly express it but uh, inwardly we appreciate creativity and uh, uh, simply uh, when it is not uh, uh, even the regular work the regular work maybe note making a simple note making but uh, along with your note making if the points are added in different colors with the uh, different bullet points with the beautiful designs that that is counted as creativity only and uh, that way uh, see creativity is a kind of uh, a brain exercise uh, which keeps your brain very young yes uh, uh, the, the in, it is not the physical age it is the creativity keeps your brain younger when your brain is younger you you would have definitely have a better problem solving skills when you are creative, it will help you to make uh, different perceptions for any problems. Uh, sometimes we take a third party view and we could be neutral with the problem. And that may help us to identify or arrive at a solution for a problem. So this is also considered as a, uh, one of the top soft skills in the job sectors. All right. Uh, earlier, uh, I said about communication. So, so we will take up communication again because uh, uh, we are going to see in detail what is that communication. Uh, it has been informed already. It is simple, straight communication without any ambiguity. Both listener 
and uh, uh, the speaker and listener shouldn't have any ambiguity. That's what we call it as communication. But it includes uh, verbal communication, nonverbal communication, and return communication. If I have to classify the communication in a workplace uh, or in a social setting, it is going to be verbal communication, nonverbal, sometimes the combination of all. So let us be aware of the types of communication and let us try to uh, use our tone, modulation, intonation in such a way when we make our verbal communication. So it means we are strong with our verbal communication. Sometimes when you speak everything in a flat tone, then that will not communicate the ideas clearly. So use, make your tone, develop your vocal culture in such a way, very particularly in, a prof in our profession, uh, it is not advised to have a flat tone. Yes, let us practice intonation. Uh, sometimes we have to raise our voice. Sometimes we have to low down. And if you are asking a question, you have to bring the tone and emotion to that sentence so that people can understand, okay, this is a question. Oh, this first, uh, this is a shock statement. So clearly it should be indicated in the verbal communication. And nonverbal communication, of course, we, you know, uh, we talk a lot about, lot and lot about the body language. It comes under uh, nonverbal communication. Uh, 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 commu verbal communication and non-verbal uh, communication are integrated. We speak by making body gestures and it, it should have a beautiful sing. Otherwise, uh, there is going to be miscommunication. And uh, written communication, see, uh, uh, the problem may arise when we don't uh, follow the rules, language rules, punctuation rules, uh, they, definitely there would be a confusion then. So follow the language rules very clearly, punctuation rules very clearly when we make our written communication. And uh, uh, developing the idea and precisely, clearly, if you could express yourself, uh, you can understand your customer's grievances your client's grievances and uh, that is one way the communication is the which develops the long lasting relationships so it is not just a personal communication what we are seeing here is the professional communication which is going to uh, develop the relationship with the clients and again leadership what we have seen already it is not uh, it is a soft skill uh, it, it is how a person grows himself within the organization and how he sets an example, sets an example and how he or she leads others uh, in the organization to grow well. That we counted as leadership. So it encompasses the ability to encourage peers, accommodate their needs, and resolve conflicts, as I told earlier, if there are three people, four people, five people, then which means more difference of opinion, uh, more uh, conflicts. But how quickly we resolve it, that matters. And we cannot say that there is, it is utter, um, entire peace of environment, entire eco-friendly environment. We cannot... Uh, uh, decide or conclude anything of that kind it is going to have difference of opinion definitely there is going to be conflicts but how quick we resolve it matters so you have to cultivate such kind of uh, culture in the organization when you are a leader and uh, then uh, that that sets an example in your community for the future employees also and decision making again we are seeing it uh, and uh, I told if it is for an individual, that's okay. But if it is for a group or if it is for a team, if it is for a brew, uh, community, you have to weigh the pros and cons. Without making analysis, let's not jump into a hasty decision. Hasty decision, uh, if our time is uh, 
uh, fortunate our decisions may go in right direction otherwise hasty decisions without making analysis may either end up in a problem so reasoned process is better than go by intuition or go by uh, gut feeling and teamwork uh, uh, again all these points have been elaborated in these slides it is how it, how we carry out the work in a team in collaboration with others and accepting all individuals with their strength and with their weakness when we accept an individual we are accepting their strength as well as their weakness so uh, it's not uh, all the 11 in the cricket uh, team cannot be the good batsman and all the 11 cannot be good at fielding all the 11 uh, uh, cannot be the uh, bowler same way in any games also uh, if it is a football some will be very strong in the front uh, in the front end someone would be very uh, good at uh, near the goal post so the roles vary roles vary but unless everybody performs the team cannot reach the success so when you decide to give a quality work and a very prompt completion of the task we should accept the team as it is with the strength and their weakness and accordingly we have to distribute the work and should make the uh, assignment successful and working in a team it develops insights of knowing sometimes we should be a leader and sometimes to be a listener as i said sometimes the idea may generate from the fake end of the team and since you are a leader or since you are in the middle of the hierarchy it's not uh, it, it is not good to ignore someone's idea so i when you are a listener you are a leader also time management it is a, a skill which we have to inculcate to uh, uh, to multiply the productivity in a very smart way nowadays almost everybody is talking about uh, multitasking see multitasking is always good it is a smart way but uh, uh, let us be conscious of what are the works we are combining sometimes it is uh, 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 it's uh, every all the works would be incomplete uh, that we cannot count it for a uh, time management that we cannot be counted for uh, a smart way sometimes one after one would also be important uh, so uh, since uh, uh, we want to practice time management uh, just like that uh, don't uh, uh, it's like uh, opening many tabs in the computer when you open many tabs in your computer it will slow down the efficiency of your computer when you close two three tabs uh, when you keep the necessary tabs open it works efficiently the same way in the name of multitasking let's not get confused with the time management uh, let's prioritize and uh, let's uh, make small small segments of works uh, and uh, that is the smartest way to achieve time management uh, and how effectively we work uh, uh, for the deadline that also matters yes uh, and uh, waiting for the deadline and waiting for the 11th hour is uh, and uh, uh, sometimes uh, overview uh, that's not uh, uh, sometimes it happens but it should we should not allow every time uh, uh, to take beyond the deadline then it's not time management and uh, it is highly valued by the employers and uh, uh, when uh, uh, the, if the time management is uh, if you, we are successful with our time management then it will not be working under pressure it will work under the pleasure since we make our own timeline and we manage our time in such a way so that it will be very helpful and the creativity and problem solving and uh, uh, see people who could solve the problems uh, 
ട്രബിൾ ഷൂട്ടേഴ്സ് ട്രബിൾ ഷൂട്ടേഴ്സ് ഇഫ് യു നോട്ടീസ് ദെൻ ദേ വുഡ് ഓൾവേസ് ബി എ ടീം പ്ലേയർ ദേ വുഡ് ഓൾവേസ് ബി എ ടീം പ്ലേയർ ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് the that person would always be appreciated by the uh, boss or immediate boss or team members everybody so to uh, uh, develop problem solving uh, we should know to keep our brain young uh, and uh, we have to develop creativity Where, to develop creativity it is uh, sometime we have to read imagine uh, drawing such things will help us to develop our creativity so that uh, uh, we could uh, unwanted situations can be uh, uh, avoided and uh, uh, we can achieve the end goals easily the best solutions can be evaluated the best plan can be uh, presented and effectively we can make the uh, assignments and friends uh, this slide says uh, soft skills uh, uh, as quoted earlier when it is soft skill versus hard skills uh, now companies are spending corporates are spending in lakhs and in billions to inculcate soft skills among the candidates tcs the uh, 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 the they spend they spend Uh, 4 percentage of the total revenue to train the employees uh, on their soft skills infosys uh, it has got a very specific program called uh, pravesh program for uh, the giving soft skill training to the uh, employees same way polaris also have some soft skill uh, uh, program for the employees and uh, uh, the former ceo of tcs said that engineering graduates every year every year if they if they make a count of engineering graduates they are coming in in and around 6 and 1/2 lakhs for every academic year but only 2 lakhs of them are employable remaining are unemployable that is the situation in india and uh, the same way when there are 10 million science graduates only 1.8 million are employable rest of them are unemployment the fact is they they all possess hard skills they are technically equipped but they are miserably fail in terms of soft skills so soft skills are equated with success in our career so that's why it has been uh, it is a high time for every individual to inculcate the soft skills if not all the 62 soft skills are listed in the google at least the top 6 uh, soft skills listed over in the uh, in the uh, in the previous slide and soft skills are required to learn the soft skills how should i uh, develop uh, uh, soft skills uh, uh you it is clear how i am going to uh, inculcate soft skills see it is uh, assertiveness versus aggressiveness assertive is the nature of a it is a good nature it's a good trait it's a good personality aggressiveness is something like your adamant and you are not making any analysis you are not understanding the situation we, we uh, when you possess soft skills when you require soft skills uh, when you develop soft skills uh, when you add soft skills to your personality you will become assertive you will never be aggressive which means you would be very flexible you would be very flexible and uh, if you feel if it is something good then you will be very firm with your decision that's what we call it as decision making that's how we have to view assertiveness and there is always a thin border between good and bad and very easily assertiveness could become aggressiveness so always as an individual that's why it has been clearly stated Uh, no one's ourselves we should know about ourselves so we could we should be definitely assertive but we shouldn't be aggressive 
doing the unthinkable saying no yes sometimes uh, 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 saying no to everyone means that we cannot develop uh, soft skills and uh, don't thinking also if, if there is no thinking and without thinking uh, saying no then uh, it's not a good sign to develop soft skills when in rome do as the romans do yes it is a simple thing uh, uh, sometimes we have to keep our practices aside based on the situation based on the environment uh, we have to uh, follow the rules followed in that particular place that will give you peace of mind that will make you successful uh, rather than complaining rather than complaining if we know how to behave like romans when we are in rome our peace of mind is assured that this one uh, uh, one quotient of soft skills follow your gut feelings see when can we follow our gut feelings when we understand that we are good natured we possess good amount of soft skills then we can follow our gut feelings what you believe you should dictate what you do sometimes uh, there would be contradictory uh, we say something and we do something uh, then people will quickly judge you they will quickly measure you oh this guy will be saying this and that uh, he'll be talking all the time about uh, uh, corruption uh, but uh, he is the one who bribes immediately when you contradict your word and action then you cannot possess soft skills sometimes you have to do something that you may not normally choose to do sometimes we should make out of box thinking sometimes uh, we should have go for a new thinking uh, that would also make you to develop soft skills so uh, again uh, to understand who is an assertive person is one who listens negotiates influences could be an assertive person when you are assertive then you possess soft skills and you can learn soft skills also and uh, there are tools for handling emotions and uh, there are negative emotions being humans we have uh, uh, equal amount of uh, positive emotions and uh, equal amount of uh, negative emotions like anger frustration hate negativity this that and there are tools also describe try to describe your feelings yes i am sad i am so totally upset and how do i reflect to my feelings there are perception check and behavior description uh, might be this cannot be dealt in detail but it appears open source tools are available to handle your emotions like simple drawing doodling yes and writing journal uh, taking a small walk these way we can handle our emotions and we are coming to the final part of uh, this presentation on soft skills and we we are sure uh, a soft skill is something uh, uh, starts with communication uh, irrespective of our designation how uh, the leadership quality problem solving uh, decision making everything so i would like to say a leader is one who knows the way shows the way and goes the way as the leader so the people as the people so the leader so these are all some of the leadership quotes uh, and if you uh, analyze these quotes uh, based on the examples you have seen and based on the behavior you emerged as a leader in different situations uh, you can understand it uh, very well some are born great some achieve greatness and some have greatness thrust upon them say shakespeare's in 12th night so let us be say that uh, uh, whether uh, we born with soft skills or we achieve soft skills or any soft skills can thrust upon us let's be aware of that and i sum up yes uh, see uh, let us assume every individual is playing a role of a learner 
or a student one way or other way so should have the sense of the beautiful and the morally good otherwise he or she with mere skills will be a well trained animal then a harmoniously developed human being says albert einstein with this i sum up my uh, i uh, 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 conclude my presentation on soft skills so it is how beautiful my sense how good how good natured i am how morally i good how good i empathize with my fellow beings that determines me as a human being as quoted earlier it is not qualification it is not designation it is not assert uh, brings respect love to an individual it is the behavior the uh, personality trait uh, bring the success to the people and thanks for the opportunity and i close my presentation here and it is open to the floor uh, for asking questions now any questions uh, yes sir ah. hello madam good evening yes yes sir am i audible madam you are audible sir ah thank you madam madam uh, these days we people are uh, having multitasking and the multitasking is so much heavily overburdened that uh, sometimes i feel you know frustrated while uh, completing the works so how best uh, can we uh, manage with the multitasking yes Thank sir you. that's what i said see multitasking if it is in the similar line yes sir, we can do yes sir, we are uh, nobody is a superhuman yes sir, we are not uh, uh, possessed with uh, extraordinary skills in the name of multitasking let's not take up uh, many assignments together and uh, add pressure on our shoulders uh, on our heads instead we will just prioritize the works uh, the rest of the works uh, and always the checklist yes uh, and uh, uh, this work first and this work on the way this uh, sometimes uh, yes uh, that way it is case to case varies and it is uh, different from individual to individual and uh, i as i told earlier if i keep many tabs open in the computer what will happen to the efficiency of the computer it will not function it cannot keep uh, any of the works uh, uh, efficient the same way let's try to close the unwanted tabs so we should know how to prioritize our own works that will help us to uh, perform well and uh, multitasking it should also be again uh, in uh, how i connect one work to the other works uh, sometime we can do multitasking sometime we cannot perform multitasking it should go by order one by one one after one so if we know by our experience uh, by our uh, 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 expectations uh, i guess uh, it is uh, good to have a multitasking skill or sometime that will slowly make us efficient with our time management when we plan well we will have time for everything i hope you agree with me am i answering yeah. your question sir yes thank you thank you very much yes sir uh mr breet singh are you asking a question uh yes vidya you can ask the question uh, am i audible yes ma'am you are audible 
Yes, uh, uh, see, I found uh, a few of them raised to their hands, uh, but they are not coming out with their questions. Uh, I guess there is no more questions, ma'am, though the hands are raised. They are not coming out with questions. Yes, ma'am. Then we can wind up. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, so once okay. again, I thank uh, the organizers for giving me this opportunity. And I thank the participants also for uh, listening to this presentation ma'am ma'am yes vidya ma'am i'm sorry ma'am actually i just wanted to unmute myself ma'am oh fine fine i'm sorry ma'am first of all i just wanted to congratulate you your presentation was really very good ma'am and i took many good messages from uh, the entire presentation of yours and uh, the question is like you were a uh, uh, addressing about when you continuously wish a person and if you are not been addressed to that or if you're not responded to that particular uh, act of yours just ignore maybe it's like uh, the timely behavior of the person can be like just ignored but yes if you sense that it is a continuous or a recurrent activity done by a person intentionally towards you how to be with that person ma'am uh, again, uh, Vidya, here, uh, see, uh, it varies from individual to individual. What I quoted is an example, right? It's a human tendency. When I greet someone, I expect the same kind of uh, reciprocation from the other end also. So one day I can ignore, two days I can ignore, three days I can ignore, but lifelong I cannot ignore that kind of response. Am I right or wrong? Yes, ma'am. So Absolutely. as an individual, as an individual, we have to decide that. Uh, yes, uh, sometimes uh, three, four days, uh, the uh, it might be the upper ceiling. Uh, then uh, if it continues, uh, maybe I should, uh, if I mean to have a relationship with that person, yes, uh, I may yes, try to uh, find out. Uh, see, every day I'm greeting, you're not responding. What's wrong with that? Something like that. We can try to open up. Uh, and uh, it all depends, right? And again, if the response is a close to response, then naturally we have to, yes, uh, we can give importance to other persons and other works. Okay, yes, ma'am. Yeah. It is so diverting is the best to... option, you say, no, ma'am? Divert, diverting yourself uh, is the best option in that case, like if there is the recurrent yes, yes. activity from that person, yeah? Yes, yes. And it is not total, uh, uh, we are not, uh, uh, it is not something we are going to hate that person. Yes. Yes. We, yes, are, we are not going to avoid them totally, but yes, we are going to stay away from that kind of practice. Yes. Yeah, I understand, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yes, thank you, Vidya. Uh, shall we close it, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks again uh, for uh, patient listening. And uh, I think I can leave. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. So now I invite Anish to introduce the third speaker, Hardeep Singh. Thank you, Afia. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Dr. Hardeep Singh. Uh, Hardeep Singh is our academic research stalwart, orator, and motivational speaker. Presently, he is serving in the most excellent institution, Amritsar Group of College, India, as professor of Department of Management Studies. He completed his PhD from IK Gurugal Punjab Technical University. Kalpartala Punjab in India. He is associated with Dr. Kalam International Foundation as Vice President and Head Researcher. His profile has been published in World Book of Researcher 2018 
at Wordsworth United Kingdom. He has been honored with the letters of appreciation by the World Book of Records, London, for his achievement. We welcome you, sir, for your session. Hello, good evening. My screen is available. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you are cutting my screen, right? So, uh, should I start now? Am I audible? Yes, my yeah, screen yes, is sir. visible to everybody? Yes, sir. Uh, right. So, good evening. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this international workshop. Uh, for inviting me as a resource person uh, to talk on this topic, exploring academic research in digital age. Talking about academic research, we all know that universities are fundamentally about two things. University give us education, and second thing, we do research over there. Education, we all know that it is a formal education, that we go to universities and colleges to get like BTEC degree, BCom, BA, BSc, MPhil, and other degrees. And coming to the research, research is very important part of our education and very important part of our life. So, research. What is research? Research is a combination of two words, re plus search. Research is that thing that is already available, and we have to do work on it to find a solution for the uh, existing problem in the society. So talking that research is creative and systematic work undertaking to increase the stock of knowledge. It involves collection, organization, and analysis of evidence to increase understanding of a topic characterized by a particular attentiveness to controlling sources of bias and error. So talking about academic research, Academic research involves a thorough investigation into what is known about a given topic. I have already told that research is a combination of two words, re and search, to search on that the knowledge that is already available. We have to work on that data, apply the analytical tools, and work on that and find the results. Other sources help add depth to your understanding, strengthen your argument, and reduce bias and misconceptions. So, university research relies heavily on academic publications and libraries. So, while doing the university research, while doing PhD, MPhil, MTech, anything, we have to do the publications in the uh, journals, in the proceedings, in the conferences. Etc. And since the web began in 1990, the internet has become a valuable research tool along with these traditional sources. So while when we are doing the research, we have to uh, we are doing research, we have to uh, uh, read some research papers that have been previously uh, published, uh, read out the work that are already done by the previous scholars on the similar topics, so as to find uh, what has been done and what is pending to be done what is problem in the society that we have to find the solution for that for that previously we have to work on the research journals we have to go to the libraries to collect the data to read the previous published research paper but now in this age digital age of this information technology there have been lot of sources besides from that libraries uh, firstly think that a scholar a phd scholar mtech scholar everybody needs that are internet research skills that are very much important to continue the research to do the research however although a quick internet search may seem the easy option for finding information for coursework and the assignments if you are not careful it can severely compromise the quality of your work while doing the research it may be your phd research it may be your master search your mtech search or any research the quality matters a lot if there is not quality in your search, that search is not valuable, that is not worthy, and it will not work to find a solution for any problem. So keep in mind, dear researchers, academicians, that your research work, that should be a quality research work, and internet research skills can help you find the information you need. In this digital age, internet 
helps a lot for a researcher to find the information to find the previously pu published research to find the you can say research papers published in the previous journals so while doing the research you have to you have to you have to read the past search the previous search in academia it is considered important that the new search builds upon past search i have already talked that we have to work we have to read the previous research papers that have been published by the previous researchers or scientists and we have to find out what is further to be done uh, academics will typically conduct a review of previous research before carrying out their own work once they have done some of their own research they will generally write it up and make it available to the future researchers however this is a strict quality control system in the place i have already talked that quality is very important part in do while doing the research it may be your master search or it may be your phd search or it may be your post doctorate research so peer review it is very important part of the research peer review is a core part of academic research it is a formal procedure for checking the quality of search before it is published if a publication publication is peer reviewed it means it has been read checked and authenticated by independent third party academics peer review has been the quality control system of academic publishing for hundreds of years so uh, peer review is very much important when we do a quality research we submit our paper uh, for publication in the journal we send our proposal to the sponsoring agency for getting the funding or we we, we submit our thesis uh, to the uh, university so the peer review has been done there are some experts of that concerned area they check into the matter they check the you can say the research methodology uh, by which way you have done the research have you applied the right tools and lastly that is the matter okay isn't it copy paste or anything isn't it plag plagiarism free research paper your paper should be plagiarism free there should not be any copy paste matter or your thesis that there should be no plagiarism only you can say 15 to 20 percent of plagiarism that is acceptable in various journals for publication or in various conference proceedings various conferences that we have sent the paper for uh, you can say presenting in the conference so your paper should be plagiarism free and your even your search proposal that you have sent to the um, funding agencies there are many funding agencies available uh, like ugc aict dst and many other funding agencies are there who fund who give the funds to the uh, researchers or to the research scholars for doing their research and that funding is done only if your research proposal that is a good quality research proposal and there is no plagiarism quality work has been done so the funding agency uh, the peer review committee if it is quality work that it passes your uh, proposal and sponsorship is given and if the you have uh, submitted the paper for publication in the journal and it is of good quality peer review committee has accepted it then it goes for publication so peer review peer review plays a very important role and it is a quality control system of academic publication for last uh, many years so coming to the academic publication standard systems for preserving and passing on knowledge and expertise had developed to support academic research academics usually publish their search in formal publications such as academic papers reports or books then coming to the journal publication journals are likely to be a source of information for you at university you will be expected to reference articles from them in your work academic articles are often published in scholarly journals collection of papers on a particular topic produced and edited by academic process there are various journals according to the research area like there are different journals for computer science different journal for mechanical engineering different journal for social sciences different journal for you can say management area and further they are again subdivided that in management area there are different journals that are about you can say human resource management different journals about machine learning different journals about marketing management different journals about you can say the human resource management uh, every area there are different 
journals and different papers are published by uh, their search have been done by different search scholars and different papers have been uh, published that uh, that are used for referencing for the young scholars for the fresh scholars who are going to do a research on the uh, on a particular topic uh, to go further search the research that have been done to continue it each journal title is released at regular intervals uh, providing a series of articles on the same topic so i have already talked that there are uh, various areas of journals and each journal is released at regular intervals like some journals some journals they are uh, released monthly some journals they are released annually some journals they are released six monthly so they uh, they are according to uh, their demand or according to their uh, you can say schedule then the academic press press the specialist publishing houses various publishers professional societies uh, like cse and many other societies and university presses exist to produce academic books and journals they will carefully check and edit everything before it is published so once again i will repeat that the quality work quality research quality results they are only published that, that that are selected by the peer review committee or the you can say experts of that field or experts of that area so bibliographic database most academics re rely on specialist databases to assess details of past research so i once again repeat that past research is very much important for the young scholars for the research scholars who are doing a research on a topic past research gives you an idea about research tools about you can say further area to do research uh, which in which area you can go what research uh, you can say is lacking in that research what area is lacking we can do further search on that you can say uh, topic so bibliographic database draw together details of scholarly publications from a wide range of sources including academic publications journals archives and books and so enable you to search a large body of scholarly literature in one go so then comes libraries university and research libraries collect together academic publications relevant to the needs of the researchers working in their institution library services are central to academic research process now it is libraries have both print collections and electric collections of information sources so the big books you see on shelves are only a fraction of sources the library is actually making available to you the others are online so we are talking about digital age we are talking about artificial intelligence we are living in this century uh, that is uh, that is working on information technology so uh, lastly previously in libraries there used to be hard books that we hard copy of the books that we go, you go to the library and study that book is hard copies of journals that we have to go to the library and then we had to read that research material and uh, find out the findings or find out the analytic tools everything what we wanted to know about that research topic or search area so now in this digital age the uh, soft copies are also available print journals are also available and electronic uh, copies of that journals are also available e copies and even the you can say conference proceedings are available in soft copy so in the library uh, you can go you can make your account you can take the you can say membership and you can read all you can say soft copy of the research material research publications or the books and you can uh, you can get the material that is required uh, for your research topic or your for your research area then coming scholarly communication it is very much important as well as writing formal publications academics also engage in communication and debate researchers around the world often keep in touch with each other to share ideas and make sure their 
cut remains cutting edge so uh, we we have seen that there are a lot of conferences international conferences national conferences in our country in our uh, in abroad across the borders of our country uh, we can visit to the other countries to attend that international conference national conferences what is the idea of doing that uh, conferences the idea of that conferences is to share the knowledge of the different researchers there you can say the researchers present their search papers over there and the other people the audience that attend that conference and get the knowledge about that you can say topic about that search paper they collect the knowledge and the, you can say the people the scholars of the similar area uh, they share their views they even get in touch with the other people networking scholar scholars networking is also done there just they sit together and share the you can say discuss about the different search topics and they uh, give their ideas and get other research scholars ideas then there are a lot of professional organizations each academic subject has its own community composed of researchers working in the same discipline like there is a csc society csc professional organization computer society of india that uh, that works on the research work in the area of uh, computer uh, computer uh, you can say field computer engineering field uh, there is icssr that is a society of you can say social sciences they it, uh, it works in the field of social sciences research is done in the field of social sciences various you can say conferences are organized with this society and likewise there are many societies one society is there istd indian society for training and development that works on uh, works in the area of training and development only so the there are profession various professional organizations and they work in their area and the scholars uh, participate in the conferences uh, according to their areas the research areas and search topics so professional organizing exist which put scholarly communication and research in different subjects uh, via international conferences national conferences many workshops and many other events that they uh, you can say organize uh, this is academic conferences i have already talked about it it is a standard practice for academics to present their search findings at academic conferences where researchers interested in a particular subject meet to discuss and debate the latest research in the field these events are often organized by professional organizations or scholar societies some societies and some professional organizations i have already discussed with you that there are many international and national professional organizations organizations that work in their various fields concerned fields then conference proceedings conference proceedings are likely to be a key source of information at you at university you will be expected to reference papers from them in your work likely in the journals the research work is published similarly in the conferences uh, conference proceedings are made they are published by different publishers and in that conference proceedings the research work the research paper presented by the different authors of different areas are published in that conference proceedings and then conference proceedings are made available in the university library even in the hard uh, hard copy and even you can say soft copies of the conference proceedings are also available uh, that will be that may be helpful for the research scholars to do their further search future research then coming social media in this digital uh, digital age in this century of information technology social media plays a very important role it may be our search field it may be any field in every field social media is playing an important role and you can say uh, strong presence of social media is very much important so increasingly academics are also using web technology to communicate and discuss their ideas blogs wikis podcasts videos and email discussions lists are often used for individuals or groups to communicate discuss and debate ideas and this is in this social idea social media you can get a lot of information about conferences about uh, many other events that are uh, that are going on in this country across the country all over the world in the globe in various universities and you can say colleges via social media you can get the information through facebook through you can say whatsapp 
and many other communication medias are also there that give you information about the you can say this research events that are going on and the research scholar can go there attend that event get the information uh, discuss the ideas get the idea share the ideas and you can say uh, uh, get a uh, do a quality research what can the internet offer for searching your subject your maybe any subject it may be computer science it may be management it may be social sciences internet plays a very important role for search in our subjects you can say take a guided tour of some key websites there are a lot of websites from where you can get the information about your uh, you can say research area research subject it has become an important way for searchers in universities to obtain resources from internet internet is playing a very vital role uh, in this research area in the previous days when there was no internet the researcher had to uh, had to go to libraries to the libraries of other cities other universities uh, to uh, search the research material uh, according to their uh, areas according to their search title and many other things research engines such as google are often the choice to obtain particular network information uh, we say it google baba it it provides information about everything anything you search you can get it get at google but you should keep in mind that your research has to be a quality research and you need not to do the copy paste from the google you can take the idea you can get the uh, you can get the research idea from the google from the you can say uh, previous search papers that have been published on the internet you can get idea but you have no to uh, copy paste however due to lack of evaluation on qualities and standard of description sometimes it is very difficult to get the valuable information of a search engine therefore searchers urgently need a new model to organize and explore at online academic research information while getting the search on internet you have to you have to uh, you have to have a good knowledge about your topic about your search area what you are going to do and what uh, knowledge do you need and what is required subject information gateway starting from the mid 90s of the 20th century hundreds of subject information gateway with valuable online academic resources to users are built up worldwide providing valuable online academic resources to the user it helps the users to obtain valuable information more quickly and accurately than current practice abroad subject information gateway gateways abroad started earlier early subject information gateways were usually built up and supported by big research projects later on university libraries and such organizations joined in main ones are british intuit then european desire german ssg5 american in infomine and many more uh, you can say so gateways and many more websites are there that may give you the information about your research area about your search topic this was that i was talking about uh, infomine that is an american gateway it was started in january 1994 by university of california riverside as a library project later on other six libraries or colleges such as wake forest university joined in the project it was the first tool of web source web resource organization provided by libraries it was also the first website based on virtual academic resource on web infomine information resource has biology architecture and medical science commercial and electronics culture and religion social and human science and many more like engineering etc infomine is a comprehensive virtual library and reference tool for academic and scholarly internet sources including websites and database then uh, coming to the, the i have already talked that various so there are various subjects to which this gateway you can say sports uh, i have already talked biology architecture medical science commerce electronics and many more subjects that this gateway has been supporting then intuit it is the largest subject information gateway website in british as one of the e lab projects started in 1994 in october 1999 projects were submitted by rdn resource discovery network projects rdn was initi initiated by manchester university corporate with many corporates and funders the core of whole organization is an association including seven universities there are four areas 
uh, which sport uh, to which this uh, gateway sport science and technology arts and human science social science health and life sciences etc pre highly high qualified network sources services are provided to instructors teachers and students in july 2006 rdn was renamed as intuit then kelly's china it is a chinese gateway one subject information gateway built in china was one of kelly's projects started in 2000 the participants of kelly's subject navigation database consists of 53 university libraries so far it contains 160000 free academic sources relating to 111 subjects 79 first class subjects so source types include references full text multimedia interacting sources yellow pages events etc this database was open to all participant libraries started from june 2006 it has been clicked 760000 times providing students instructors and researchers in the university's free access of academic network information then coming to the national science digital library chinese academic of science national science digital library officially started the built up work on subject information gateway in december 2001 until july 2008 five subject information gateways had been built they are physics and maths life sciences book information chemistry source and environment information science then lastly concluding my topic i was talking about academic research quality academic research role of digital age this artificial intelligence in this research work so there are lot of information gateways for academic research like we have already talked uh, we can uh, we can even uh, you we can even search the material the previously published research work from the internet from the google from various online journals there are free journals and there are some subscribe journals for which we have to uh, pay the subscription then we can uh, read the research papers previous research papers that have been already published uh, relating to our area the research work that in which area we want to do in google or wikipedia or you can just show the ganga is also again another uh, another site from which we can get the previously uh, done research work for the phd research scholars uh, the research work that has been already done and we can find the idea to do the further search what we can do and what is lacking in that you can say research uh, thesis or search paper we should use all the information sources to conduct our search in a knowledgeable and valuable manner one thing more i would like to um, you can say mention that your search need to be a quality search and you should be giving a solution to the existing problem of the society if your search work is not cited nobody reads it there are no views then your search work that is of no use your search work Uh, should be you can say beneficial for the society and it should be giving a solution uh, to the it is it may be giving solution to the existing problem of this society and what is more required is quality research that i have already discussed and it provides a solution to the existing problem in this society uh, so you know, once again i would like to you can say mention uh, to the participants dear academicians dear researchers Uh, do quality research and uh, this quality research that also helps in sustainable development and economic development of the nation uh, so i think my talk is over and the platform is yours so i have ended my talk once i would like to thank the organizers once again to invite me on this platform to give my talk on this topic uh, exploring academic research in this digital age uh, thanks once again sir my talk is over
if you can any if you have any questions and you can ask Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for your wonderful presentation. Uh, I think there is no queries or no doubt. So uh, now I, I invite uh, Dr. Balakrishna Parasraman sir, uh, to give a validatory address, sir. Sir, please carry on, sir. Hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we hear you. Can I? Is it clear? Yes, 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 sir. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, thank you to the uh, moderator. Uh, so I believe uh, today is the, the last day of our <coughs> virtual uh, workshop. Eh? Um, I was in the first day. I gave an uh, opening uh, speech for the first day. So today, I think, I believe uh, most of you uh, already learn, uh, learn and relearn, uh, okay, and continuous uh, improvement uh, on the teaching and learning, especially in the virtual classroom. Uh. So I believe uh, most of the speakers, uh, distinct speakers, already deliver their, uh, their what they call, uh, their talk, last three days. And I believe you all uh, benefit uh, a lot from their, their talk and also their viewpoints, especially uh, during the uh, time now, uh, we are having a difficult time. Uh, I can say difficult time, right? Eh? Because uh, everything uh, changed very fast. Every day we can see the changes actually take place, uh, especially uh, in the higher education. So I, I congratulate all the participants who are very patiently follow the day one until now. And I believe all of you are working in your respective uh, university all over India, maybe some of them from Africa or Malaysia. And I believe uh, uh, there are speakers also from uh, from all part of India, uh, and also the participants also come from so different. Uh, although uh, Indian is a big state, but every uh, no uh, India is big and uh, big country, and also we have a lot of state. And there's a differences between a state also. Eh? And the same thing goes to even uh, other countries like like Malaysia, Europe, USA, and many uh, places in the world. But I think the one thing that we learn actually is only uh, one universal, eh? uh, which we call uh, virtual classroom. So classroom can be uh, physical or can be online. Uh, both actually uh, focus on the teaching and learning eh? that we what you call uh, giving our 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 sharing our knowledge with our students. Eh? So as I said in the in the in my first day in opening speech, eh, say that uh, today the classroom uh, is totally different. Eh? So the expectation actually comes from the students, uh, not the teachers. Those days maybe uh, one way uh, communication, but now we must compulsory we have two way communication. And I think I believe uh, after the three days virtual uh, what do you call workshop, 
uh, that we all gone through. I think one lesson we learned that uh, the challenge to how to bring the students in in the classroom and how they are actually engaged and commit and also finally uh, when they are out of the classroom what they can bring back to to their own life also future uh, uh, I mean future life because uh, believe or not uh, our students will be the future talent huh? future future leaders uh, future talent that of course the industry expectation is quite high on them so everything actually happening in the classroom huh? and of course, of course uh, outside classroom I believe both is very important classroom and outside classroom lah. today a student uh, so much focus on classroom even the lecturers so much focus on assessment uh, by exam and so on I think I believe uh, exam is not any more relevant on the on the fi on the final exam maybe final exam can be change the mood into uh, something different lah. that 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 we all can think about that how to rather student memorize rather sort of more and critical analysis so these are the thing i think there will be a uh, feature scenario uh, like we call odl now okay uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of university around the world started to introduce uh, you know uh, online uh, online learning uh, even at the post graduate level recently i found that <coughs> whatever i said is really happening now where all the top university like uh, mit <laughs> howard cambridge oxford I think they they already uh, joined together, and now they are already coming back to Asia and start uh, selling their, their uh, what they call their, their degrees, right? Eh? And then people start buying uh, because you know that uh, they have a high credential, but no more they stay in United States or Europe or they are coming back to the near to our our, our like our our place, huh? Eh? So that's how happening now. I think uh, we. Here, uh, need to think about that also. So even the leaders, uh, think about that. So what is going to happen? The university uh, leaders, uh, vice chancellors, you know, uh, deans, uh, whoever holding the position must think about how to transform the teaching learning into the uh, classroom that that also uh, students play an important role. Okay. So my my conclusion that student must come first. And then the lecturer become facilitator. Mostly lecturer, you must be play a role facilitator. You can't teach like you teach in the school. Eh? Uh, school different because school they are still um, not come to the mature maturity or adult age. So we need to guide them. Uh, even 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 high school, I think we already started to think about this. Eh? more participation for student and so on. So I believe uh, university totally a different uh, different. Um, platform in the future that we all must be think rethink again what will happen uh, so start from the today don't think about tomorrow I think many of you maybe uh, will start a new uh, class in the one or two months later and I think we all have to we all have discuss lah. we have to do a long workshop like what is workshop huh? so I really thanks to uh, uh, Camp Comorian class and also uh, Lavender Club, eh? both uh, Dr. Regina and Dr. Frank, and of course uh, myself uh, from Malaysian Industrial Development and HR. Uh, really thanks to all the committee members, uh, moderators, and also uh, people who were involved eh? directly or indirectly, I think, to make this uh, program. That's why I, <clears throat> since three years ago, eh? I always support the, all these programs uh, initiated by, uh, I can say that, uh, you know, uh, to all of you. Um, another thing, like I just want to announce uh, to all of you, I recently appointed as the dean for postgraduate. My new job will start uh, next week. Uh, so we are in, in public universities. Uh, we call University Malaysia Kelantan. We are entrepreneurship university. So I would like to invite uh, those student uh, PhD uh, lecturers, uh, maybe. Some students also want to do masters in Malaysia in public universities, and I really welcome you all. I think nowadays uh, even the the lecturers uh, want to embarking their study in overseas, and I think you can take opportunity. Yeah, so like like what happened in China, a lot of student uh, lecturers from China come and study in our university. They only come like one, one, two, three or three times a year. They come and for you know, uh, so as a dean. 
the postgraduate i also uh, practicing what i what i preach uh. i want my student more <clears throat> enjoyable in their study especially postgraduate level masters and phd and i want them to inquire so these two degrees i think very important for you uh, to you know to to further further and uh, you know uh, to enhance your knowledge i think as you know uh, malaysia is center for excellence so they are purely public universities so maybe you can also encourage your student come and study here and get some experience so basically we also get a office in kuala lumpur so one day uh, you have come to my university one hour as for just to, you know like like to visit so this is my challenge uh, job uh, for me to you know to to bring uh, everywhere uh, the you know the university so i think india we are really really i uh, want to see more students come to malaysia like china we already have about 400 students from china so and most of them is lecturers they are studying uh, here uh, so i hope that to see all and we make thing happen now you know and already told dr frank also about this and uh, maybe uh, you know dr frank can be a sponsor partner so that uh, more people come and join and of course uh, the quality education is so world, world recognized a lot of our student from africa many coming from africa also from ghana from nigeria and some of them already working in abroad working in us and australia and so on so for that note i really welcome all of you to you know to to contact me uh, then we can do a lot uh, further on this huh? so on behalf of the organizing committee and um, as a pattern for this uh, uh, virtual uh, workshop uh, again i'd like to thanks to dr frank uh, and dr regina both of them uh, the the person that behind do all the work and and in with their with two of them i think the other uh, like uh, thanks also dr ganesan from ipg eh? uh, from uh, malaysia uh, together with the other team members huh? even the students PhD scholar, master scholar, and of course, I really, really thanks to our participant. Uh, yeah, that's